the last lesson we talked about retirement income that you get from your own savings plans, money that you elect to put away while you're working so that that money is there when you retire to help support your, to help supplement your income when you do retire. There is another uh, avenue to supplement that income when you retire, and that's through Social Security. And we talked about Social Security in Chapter 6 and 7, but now we're going to talk about how you get those benefits. So as soon as you start working, you're going to start seeing those deductions from your paycheck, and some of those deductions is going to be for Social Security. <clears throat> when you retire, okay, you start receiving that money back that you paid in. Um, when you start receiving Social Security benefits, you're going to receive that in a monthly check, and benefits can start as early as age 62, but they're not the full benefit unless you wait until you're age 67, which is considered the full retirement age. So at 67, you'll get the full Social Security benefit every month, that payment every month, at age, if you decide to take it at age 62 um, or prior to age 67, then it's going to be a reduced amount. So let's take a look at some examples. In 2009, Jose had two jobs. He earned this much working at a nursing home the first eight months, and then he switched jobs and began to work in a hospital where he earned this much. How much Social Security tax did he overpay? So some numbers that you're going to need to know is in 2009, which is when this was um, we're talking about the maximum taxable income for Social Security taxes was this much. Each of Jose's employers took out the required 6.2% for Social Security. The nursing took home the nursing home took out 6.2% of the 73440, and the hospital took out 6.2% of what he made at the hospital to get these numbers here. So. In total, they withheld, between the two of them, they withheld 7192.31. So this was the amount withheld at the nursing home, the amount withheld at the hospital. Together, they withheld that. Well, this amount is too much because he's. they were only supposed to withhold 6.2% of his total income for the year. So his total income for the year was the combination of these two, which um, the maximum here, this is the maximum taxable income is 106,800, 6.2% of that. So 6.2% of 106,800 would be 6621. He paid in this much, but this was all he was required to pay in, so he paid in too much. So he overpaid by 57071, and when he fills out his tax return, he'll note that he overpaid and he'll get a refund of that. So this is not a refund of federal income tax, it's a refund of overpaid uh, Social Security taxes. So as you're working, on a regular basis, you're going to get a Social Security statement, which is a record of the money that you earned every year. You get a certain number of credits each working year. <clears throat> it includes the number of Social Security credits you have earned. You can earn a maximum of four credits for each year. So these credits um, determine how much benefit you get once you retire. So let's look here. Fran requests her annual Social Security statement from the Social Security Administration each year. She wants to check how many Social Security credits she received for 2009. She worked all year and earned 8102 per month. How many credits did she earn? Fran goes to the Social Security website to earn a credit in 2009. She needed to earn at least 1,090. To earn the maximum four credits, Fran needs to earn four times the amount for one credit. So she needed to earn at least 4,000, I'm sorry, four times 1,090. <coughs> well, she earned 8,102 in one month, which is greater than what she needed to earn to get the four credits. So she got all four credits for that year. Okay, let's look at this example here. Again, some numbers you're going to need to remember. Marissa reached age 62 in 2007. She did not retire until years later. Over her life, she earned an average of 2300 per month. 
after her earnings were adjusted for inflation. What is her Social Security full retirement benefit? So you're on $2,300 a month. Okay, so Marissa was born in 1945 and turned 62 in 07. For people turning 62 in 2007, the formula for computing Social Security benefit is this. 90% of the first 680 of monthly earnings. 32% of the monthly earnings between 680 and 4100. And 15% of the earnings over 4100. So Marissa's monthly earnings were 2300. So 90% of the first 680, so 90% of 680 is 612. So after we get that amount, we're going to deduct 680 from the 2300 to find out what was left over. She had 1620 left over after that. And then that is 32% of, of that amount. 32% of 1620 would be 518.40. So we add these two numbers here. You get 113040, which is what her monthly Social Security benefit would be. Now, if you start earlier than 67, remember it's a reduced amount. She retired at age 65. What will her monthly benefit be since she did not wait until age 67 to receive full retirement benefits? Age 67 is considered to be full retirement age if you were born in 1945 or later. If you start collecting Social Security before age 67, your full retirement benefit is reduced according to the following schedule. If you start collecting benefits at age 62, then it is reduced by 30%. If you wait to 63, it's reduced by 25%. 64, 65, 66, and at 67, you get the full benefit. So Marissa's full retirement benefit was 113040. Since she retired at age 65, she's going to get a reduction of 13.3%. So if we take her full amount, multiply it times the reduction amount, this is the amount that she's going to be reduced by. So her full amount minus the reduction amount would give her the new amount. So you can see it affects her monthly income. Rather than getting the full amount of 113040, she's going to get a reduced amount of 98006 because she decided to take that retirement benefit prior to age 67. And what if she had retired at age 62? That would be a 30% reduction. So we would take that dollar amount, that full amount, 1130.40 times 30.3 would be 339.12. That would be the reduction. So if we subtract that from what her full amount would be, That would be 791.28. So at 30, if she retired at 62, then her benefit would be 791.28. The question is, is what's the difference between Marissa's monthly benefit if she retires at 62 instead of 67? Oh, it was that 11, 30.4 times... 0.3%. So there's, the difference would be $339.12. And that would actually be the benefit at age 62. Now you have to report your Social Security benefits on your tax form. And if your total, ta total taxable income exceeds $25,000 or $32,000 for married couples, you may have to f pay federal income tax on your benefits. So you're taxed again on your Social Security benefits if you make too much money. So if your total, total taxable income between wages, pensions, interest, dividends, plus any tax-exempt income, plus half of your Social Security benefits, is $25,000 for single, $32,000 for married filing jointly, then you have to pay taxes on your Social Security benefits. So let's talk about one more thing, a Medicare benefit. When you apply for Social Security, you may also apply to receive Medicare. Medicare has four parts. It's hospital insurance, medical insurance, Medicare Advantage, and prescription drug coverage. So it's, it's, a, it's a medical benefit. You must pay a monthly premium for Part B, the medical insurance. In 2008, the standard premium was $96.40 per month. 
the premium may be higher if your adjusted gross income is higher than 85000 So in this example, Ryan has retired, qualified to receive Medicare. He's got to pay the standard monthly premium of 96.40. How much did he pay for the year? You just multiply that times 12 to get 1156.80. So this is just some information, some more benefits that you can receive when you retire. Hey, that's the lesson.